I'm sure you are all more than aware of COP26, the UN climate summit that happened at the end of last year. But do you ever wonder whether the world's leaders are taking the biodiversity crisis as seriously as they are the climate crisis? After all, scientists are calling this the sixth mass extinction. Biodiversity supports every aspect of our lives. Plants absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they produce the oxygen that we breathe. Microbes and fungi generate healthy soils and healthy soils help regulate the global carbon cycle. Rainforests influence global rainfall. Birds protect our crops from insect pests. Without biodiversity we would have no society. We are part of nature and biodiversity is the very foundation of our lives. We are losing the world's biodiversity at an utterly alarming rate. A major report on biodiversity and ecosystem services published in 2019 found that one million species were threatened with extinction. The final text of the Glasgow COP26 climate deal emphasised the importance of protecting, conserving and restoring nature and ecosystems to meet the world's goal of holding global warming to 1.5 C. In other words, biodiversity is key to the climate emergency. The two are inextricably linked. So what is being done for nature and ecosystems? Well, later this year, the biggest biodiversity summit in the last 10 years will take place. After being delayed for two years due to the pandemic, COP15, the 15th meeting of the Conference of Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity, will take place in Kunming City in China's Yunnan province. Governments around the world have become increasingly aware that healthy biodiversity, as with our climate, is crucial to human health, our economy and our whole society. We must transform the way we interact with the world around us. We need governments to lead the way in achieving this transformation. We need a blueprint for the way forward. Although the name COP15 is not intuitive, COP15 is the United Nations Biodiversity Conference. COP15 could be, and indeed must be, the defining meeting to ensure the future of global biodiversity and consequently the well-being of our societies. The COP15 Summit will define the text of the Global Biodiversity Framework, a framework that will guide global actions towards the hold of biodiversity laws, as well as giving hope to achieve the vision of living in harmony with nature by 2050. One outcome should see countries commit to protect 30% of the world's land and oceans by 2030. Already, more than 70 countries, including the UK, have thrown their support behind this idea. Other commitments are to eliminate the discharge of plastic waste, reduce pesticide use by at least two thirds, and get rid of subsidies and incentives harmful to biodiversity by at least half a trillion dollars each year. Currently, biodiversity conservation is woefully underfunded, but the Kunming meeting has an ambition to raise the funds necessary to overcome financial barriers and secure a future for nature around the world. A commitment of an additional $200 billion each year has been suggested, but we're hoping for much more. Already, we're seeing calls from a number of countries to increase funding for biodiversity. China, Japan, the UK and the EU are all prominent here. It is also hoped that the meeting will strengthen and build on resolutions made at the Climate Summit, encouraging governments to increase nature's ability to store and absorb greenhouse gases in the form of nature-based solutions such as forests, seagrass meadows and peatlands. The Kunming COP15 aims to drive policies to restrict the destruction of natural ecosystems, prevent species extinctions, and work with local communities to restore biodiversity and find solutions to the climate crisis. As well as transforming farming, forestry, and other uses of the land and sea into nature regenerative practices. The Kunming COP15 has the potential to drive actions that will lead to massive benefits for biodiversity and our climate. So it seems the Kunming COP15 could be a major leap forward with the world's leaders coming together to address global biodiversity loss. The Global Biodiversity Framework is an acknowledgement that something needs to be done to protect and restore the world's biodiversity, but also an acknowledgement that something can be done.
It's a global commitment for countries to work together towards the vision of us all. Living in harmony with nature.